I'm going to make it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for being in the house of God once again. Amen. Oh, I was about to wonder if anybody was glad to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I know this weather plays tricks sometimes. Uh, but again, we appreciate the Lord for who he is. Praise God. That makes him worthy right by himself. Hallelujah. And anytime we get together with the people of God, that should be a blessed time. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the word says where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. Hallelujah. And we show up, we always want him to be there. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We appreciate the Lord for just who he is. And we're going to go ahead and uh, get right into the word of God. I appreciate all of those that are online watching. Amen. And those that took time to come out. Even with the weather, there's a blessing for you. Amen. Because you pressed your way and God is pleased at the pressing. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, we're going to ask that you stand as uh, we read uh, the uh, passage of Scripture. And I want to read a couple of passages, the first being in James chapter 1, beginning at verse 2. James chapter 1, beginning at verse 2, and I'll be reading the Christian Standard uh, Version today. Praise God. It says, Consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, Whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that ye may be mature and complete, liking nothing. And then look at uh, verse 12. It says, Blessed is the one who endures trials, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Praise God. And I want to read the uh, book of uh, Jude. Praise God. First chapter there, verses 3 and 4. Dear friends, although I was eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I find it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was delivered to the saints once for all. For some people who were designated for this judgment long ago have come in by theft. They are ungodly, turning the grace of our God into sensuality and denying Jesus Christ, our only Master and Lord. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for this appointed time to declare your word. Father, we speak that your word will go forth unhindered and that the word will fall on good soil, that it may take root and bring forth the fruit that you desire in the name of Jesus. Lord, we appreciate all that you have done, yet done, and all that you're about to do. For we yield this service to your hands, God, that you might do what you will as you will. For it is so in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Amen. And as I was going through the devotionals, praise God, uh, for this week and, and meditating and, and just reading and allowing the word to shift through my spirit, these passages came to mind. And as I began to look into them a little bit deeper, Praise God. Uh, what stuck out was, is if I had to use for a topic, it would talk about character under pressure. Praise God. Character under pressure. And these particular passages of scriptures here is just sort of reminding us, praise God, that we've got to contend for our faith. Praise God. And you know, everybody goes through uh, different trials and, and different situations Praise God. And sometimes when you're going through these various trials or various situations, it ain't always uh, a feel-good situation. Amen. Praise God. But when you begin to think about what James says it here is that when we experience various trials, we should know that the testing of our faith produces endurance and that endurance 
should have its full effect so that we may become mature and complete like in nothing. And so when I begin to think about character under pressure, praise God, you see, if you think about the situation, when we get up under pressure, the human nature is, it's time for me to duck. Time for me to run and hide rather than have the conflict. But God uses pressure to bring out the character. And see, sometimes people get character mixed up with reputation. Right, right. Reputation is what folks say about you. Character is what God knows about you <laughs> and what you know about yourself. Because, see, we can't see character, literally. But how you demonstrate and how you live will exemplify to a degree. But character is that that's behind the scenes that God knows and you know. Reputation is that that folk think about you and what they say about you. So that's two different things because we've all been in round and we know folk that had great reputation. But then when one of them character flaws came out in public, it shook up some things because you would never have thought of it based on the reputation that was behind the name. That's why for saints, it's very important to understand the pressures and the trials that come our way. Because our Father loves us so much, he wants to show us our character flaws so that we can deal with those flaws. Because, see, when he shows it to us, we have to deal with it because, see, character is that that we work on because we're the one know about it. We're the one that's in control. And that is why God shows it so that we know it's there to work on it. That's not an easy thing. But that's why character can really only be built through pressure. And when you have made up your mind that you want to live for the Lord and you know what God has called you to do, the enemy is not going to sit back and just let you roll on into the vision that God given you. But he's going to fight you on every turn that you make to make you doubt that you are on the path that God has called you into. And y'all remember uh, First Lady uh, El Eleanor Roosevelt, you know, she used to say a, a quote that she said that a woman is like a tea bag. You don't know how strong it is until it gets in the hot water. <laughs> you don't know how strong, and I don't know how strong I am until I'm in that hot water. What that is reminding us and showing us is pressure is going to let us see the real us. I can talk a good game. I can look good, articulate good, dress good, and all of those things. As they say, talk the talk, but walking the walk is a whole nother ball game. As it said, until you're in the hot water, then you know what you're made out of. The hot water that God allows is not to destroy us, but it's to get out of us the stuff that should not be there so that what he put there can flourish and come forth. Because what he has deposited in each and every one of us, not just for us, but it's for those that we're coming in contact with. And if he don't get out of us that that's blocking what he has for us to give to others, they might miss out from us. But let me help you out a little bit. When God got something for you and who he want to use to pour it into you or give to you, if they don't line up, he going to get somebody else because he's going to get it to you when you are seeking. But I want you to understand this, this principle and what's behind this because, see, 
Sometimes we get a little confused and mixed up in our Christian walk. We be praying, God, I want to be like you. I want a closer walk with you. God, I want to do this, and I want this power, and I want this ability. Praise God, because I want to represent you as I should. God is pleased with that, but when you begin to pray that, then you got to be willing to pay the price that goes along with that. See, the anointing with God don't just happen. That anointing is made under pressure. Because if you can't withstand the pressure when it gets hot, you're going down with everybody else. But if you want the power, then you got to be willing to pay the cost, which means there's times when I got to turn my plate down, I've got to cut off the TV, I got to let my running crew know, can't be with you today because I got to spend that time with the Lord. I got to spend that time in the Word. I got to spend that time meditating. Oh, I would love to go with you to the ball game, but right now, the ball game will interfere with my time with the Lord, so the ball game got to go on hold as much as I might like the ball game, but my time with God is more valuable than the time with the game. You have to make those kind of decisions when you want to go to the next level. See, you look at somebody else in the walk and you say, Lord, if I could just do what they do. No, nah, you just do what God asks you to do because that's more than enough right there. That's why God made each and every one of us with a different identity, even though collectively we all are working to be a piece of the puzzle to bring it together. Character is built under pressure, and when pressure comes, we need to understand that that is only to develop us and make us. If I want to grow, I will not grow and cannot grow if I don't experience some pressure. And you, if you be honest with yourself, you know that for a fact because you will not do what you need to do in the Lord sometimes until things get too hot on your end. As long as everything is smooth as silk, you doing your own thing going on and just saying, Lord, you're so good and you're blessing me and everything is all right. My family's in order. My bank account is good. My job is promoting me and all of that. You going on about your thing. Somebody asks you, can you do that? Child, ain't got time for that right now, but uh, get back with me later. I'll check and see. But when that thing reverses, and they start talking about we going through a layoff, and you begin to realize, oh, Lord, I might be part of that. You start dialing in them, calling everybody you know that you think can pray or will pray. Will you pray for me? Because the job talking about they're going to have to cut some folk, and I need my job because I got to pay these bills. <laughs> then you begin to think about the Lord, and now you're willing to sacrifice to a degree because you need something from God. God wants us to learn to sacrifice before we need something for him. That's just like in a relationship. You don't mind helping your spouse out, but Lord knows you don't want them. Every time they're going to be nice to you, it's because there's a, a carrot behind it that they want this or you, they getting ready to butter you up because they getting ready to ask for something that they want and so they got to butter you up first to get it. You want to know that you're going to butter me up without wanting anything. That's what makes us grow and, and, and get closer because if you only going to butter me up, I already know. You want something but it ain't because you want it, that's why you butter me. It ain't because you just love buttering me. You looking for something. God knows what our heart is and intent is. That's why he's looking for a relationship. See, that's why you got folk that, and I tell y'all this all the time, I heard a bunch of preachers, and they some of them that can preach, as the folks say, 
preach the roof off the ceiling to a degree. And it's perfect. It sounds good. The English is in order and the history and the facts and all of that's in order. But guess what? Sound good, look good, but his prayers getting through. You got the numbers because guess what? Folk love to follow that that look good and sound good. But looking good and sounding good, if it's the wrong message or taking you to the wrong direction, you all going to run into the ditch. That's why the word comes back and says, study to show yourself approved workman. When you study this word and you get it for yourself, then that that you hear only confirms what you've already been studying and what you know, and that is where God is taking us. But in order for us to get there, God uses pressure to get us to that next level. And so as saints, we don't need to get upset because somebody got on my nerves. That means God's showing me I, I got to work on my patience. That's what that means. We upset with them. Lord, they, they spoke to me like that, looked at me like. If that bothers you, then you say, Lord, have mercy. You got to help me because I'm going the wrong way. I ain't supposed to be worrying about what they said and how they looked at me. What you trying to show me, Lord? See, it ain't always them, but God uses them or may use them. Even if God don't use, see, the enemy uses them because they allow the enemy to use them to take you all of the course that God is trying to get you to. So sometimes it's the Lord that allows this, but the Bible makes it clear. And James, God didn't put that stuff on it to test us. He put it, or he allowed it, to bring out of us what he's already put in us, but for us to get rid of that that's not like him out of us. But we can't work on it until he shows it because there ain't too many folk that don't feel like they all right. God is a good God. And you know, what I love about the Lord, and I, and I say it so many times, that God, he loves us so much that in spite of ourselves, he still will do things for us for his glory. But we get caught up in, well, this prayer going through, that's going through. And so we think that cause everything to get an answer, we still all together. No, nah, that's called grace and mercy. He's given us time to work on that that he's shown us that we've got to deal with it. But we've been praying, God, I want to grow in you. Well, if you want to grow in him, then you got to go through the trials and, and, and go through what he went through or go through things to be made to get to that point. And so what God is trying to encourage us and to help us understand is don't back away from the pressure. But endure that pressure because as James said, that the testing of our faith will bring about endurance. So if I persevere, praise God. In other words, if I hang in there, I'm coming through it. I may get a, a few bruises, you know, a few burns or whatever, but if I don't quit, if I don't stop, praise God, I will come through the rough spot that I'm going through. And as I go through that, what that does is it helps mature me in the faith because it says that we may be mature, complete, and lacking nothing. So the word is letting me know if I don't go through these trials, I'm going to be like a child. I ain't going nowhere. And when you stop growing, you stop living. 
Think about it. You're in school. They got these different levels, grade one through grade 12 or whatever. And you get through the sixth or seventh grade, and you say, well, I've been in that sixth, seventh grade now. This is enough. I feel like I got enough information. You only got enough information up to grade six or seven, whatever grade you decide to start. But there are a lot more that you need that you hadn't been exposed to because you stopped at the early level. As we begin to grow in the Lord, then the Lord will open up more doors and show us another level. As long as we live, we will never have arrived because the more we commit and draw nigh to the Lord, the closer he's going to get to us. See, the enemy understands that, and that is why the enemy uses little trials, little tricks, to get you focusing in on the trick or the offense or whatever, the wrongdoing that somebody set you up on the job and, you know, tried to expose you and make it look like you were the guilty one when they were the guilty party because they're moving the blame off of them, trying to put it on you and jeopardize you. And now you upset because that can get me fired. But let me tell you something. You belong to the Lord and you mature and you stand. God will get you through that difficulty because that lie that they tried to plant or show, it will get exposed. But sometimes, this is the thing why our relationship with God is so important so that we can hear him when he speaks to our spirit, is sometimes God knows it's time I need to move you from where you are, but you are so comfortable with where you are. If I don't create the heat, you ain't going nowhere. And as long as you stay, you have reached your limit and cannot go no higher because you are comfortable and you're not doing anything else to advance. And so in order for God to move you out of there, he got to heat it up. So you'll say, I got to get up out of here. But see, there's a time when you have to stay and fight, and then there's a time when you got to go because God is moving you. But you got to know the difference. And when you learn that, it keeps the pressure off of you, and it puts it on God. See, when the Lord revealed to me a long time ago, praise God, and he told me my job is to believe what it says, his job is to do it however he want to do it. See, when I quit trying to figure out how God was going to do it or when he was going to do it, how he was going to do it, and just said, it don't make me no different how you do it as long as it get done. And go on about my business. And sometimes it would almost scare me a little bit because I'm like, Lord, this is serious here, and, and I'm acting like it ain't that serious. But see, it was serious to me, but it wasn't serious to God because it was just snap the finger for God. But he was teaching me how to, to remind me, if you trust me, you're standing on my word. Am I not going to perform my word? Because I watch over my word to perform that word. What he's looking for is somebody to believe his word and walk by faith and not by sight. And so when I begin to look at it and, 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 and understand that, I'm saying, that's your business how you get it done. You told me to go pray for the sick and they be healed. I go pray for them. It's on you now what you do with them. Because, see, I don't know the heart of that person. See, I can go pray for somebody, but I don't know if they really want to be healed fully. See, they might say they do or we assume they do, but then they might be saying, I'm ready to go. <laughs> God wants you to understand. Character is built under pressure, and what he's saying to us as saints, don't let the pressure stop you from being to, uh, promoted to the level that God wants you to be at. Praise God. And as we begin to look, you know, back at some different uh, passages in, this, in the word of God, you remember um, what was, uh, how God used uh, Rahab, the prostitute, praise God. Now, 
she wasn't a believer at the time, but when the spies came over to tour the land, and they came to her, and she knew that they were men of God, she was willing to hide them, but she said, because she knew that they were men of God, she said, now when you come to destroy our land, because we already know what your God done done for y'all. The devil knows he can't win against God. But sometimes the saints forget and act like the devil can win. The devil's already lost. He's just going through the motion. That's why the Bible says he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Because he knows he can't show up in anybody's face and get away with it. So he got to find one that don't believe or ain't quite sure that their God will do what he said he's going to do. And that's the one he'll begin to amplify all of the flaws to help your doubt grow even higher. But when he run into somebody that know their God and know what the word says and stand on that word, he says, it's got to go somewhere else. It's too hot here. <laughs> you know, because it's Daniel reminding us, it says, they that know their God, great exploits that they will do. Because if you know your God, then you know where your source of strength is coming from. And that's what you're going to stand on in spite of what it sees or look like. That's why we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Because you're not going to feel it and it's not going to look like it's going to work. And that's more times than not. Because everything God asks you and tells you is bigger than what you can do really. In yourself. But through God, you can do all things. And the Lord knows that, but he want to know, do you believe that? And so what God is wanting us to understand as believers today, that being with him and moving to that next level, it's going to create some friction in our lives. It's just like when God called Abraham, I uh, called Moses, and he told Moses, he said, you're going to deliver my people from Egypt, and you're going to lead them to the promised land. And he told him, he said, now look, I want you to look all over this. And he told him, and Joshua would, was going to lead him, he said, now, every place you can see, when he told Abraham to leave his family and leave his country and go to the place, he was going to show him. And he said, and Abraham didn't even have, Abram didn't even have a son at the time. And he says, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Praise God. And he says, look at the stars. Look at the sand. Your descendants is going to be just that great. He ain't got one child. And he telling him them descendants is going to be greater than the sands of the sea and the stars. And he ain't got one child? Think about That's awesome. Who, who wouldn't have some doubt there? So he said, nah, but you got to leave this place for that to take place. So he said, get going to a place I'm going to show you. He didn't know where he was going. God just said, you get to marching and I'm going to show you. But guess what? When he gave him that vision and showed it to him, the place that he told them, the promised land, guess what? All of the different enemies was already living in the promised land. All the Moabites and Amorites and all the otherites, they were already in the land that God said was yours. And you're going to take the people over and you're going to this land that's flowing with milk and honey and the enemy is already there. But see, God didn't let them magnify or think about the enemy at the time he gave it because he didn't want to scare them off. But when he gave it to them, the enemies was already there. What am I saying is that the God has spoken and put in you, the opposition already exists. But because God is working on us, that pressure all that discrimination and everything else that comes against us and mistreatment and all of that kind of stuff and lack of uh, funds and resources and all of those different things being treated like a second citizen and all that good stuff. All of that is to just help us develop the real us that he put in us. Because when God deposits something in you, He's waiting for his return.
but it takes us to do our part as he adds on to bring it out. All that we need to fulfill everything that God has given us was already in us at birth. But it had to be developed because it was in seed form. Seed has the potential to do what the seed was designed to do. But the seed will never develop if the seed is not put into action. If it is not in that ground, it will remain a seed the whole time. That's why we got so much potential in the graveyard you can't even think about. It. Folk had so much talent and ability, but they never developed it. But it was in them because they refused or felt like they couldn't do it because somebody said, you'll never be nothing. You never can do that. And so they accepted that, and they didn't even attempt when the gift was already in them. The seed is in us. But until some pressure is applied to make us see it and then begin to deal with that that we need to deal with, we will remain at the same level. Character under pressure is developed. And so we should not fight. When I say we should not fight, we should not fight against the fact that pressure is going to come. But we should fight through it to keep going to build our perseverance and endurance. Because if we got the attitude that God's word says that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, then that means I can do it. Because I'm not doing it alone, I'm doing it with Christ. But it does not mean that I'm not going to get some knockdowns. But it means that when I get knocked down, I get back up and I keep going towards it because I ain't giving up on what God says. And see, when we refuse to give up on what we know that God is doing, the enemy is constantly punching. But we might get pushed to the side, but while we're pushing to the side, we're still putting that next foot up. We get knocked down, we just take our hands and brace or anything near us and push ourselves right back up and keep going. Because we know that that endurance will get us to where we need to be because the Bible says that as we go through those trials and those different tests we're being made mature we're being complete that we may like nothing boy that I tell you like nothing and if I got to go through the fight and I know I already won the fight I'm just going to keep swinging because that told me I already won. But while I'm swinging, I'm going to get hit too, but I'm going to keep swinging. But when it's all said and done, I have won. We already know we win. We got the word. That's why what happens to us is not determined by what people do to us. What happens to us is what we decide we're going to accept contrary to what God says. But when we choose to accept God's word and that word is what we stand on, we will come through even though we may have to take some knocks and bruises, we still coming out. Because God's word not going back to him without accomplishing what has been sent to do. And so you might say, well, you know, I've been through life and this and all of that has happened and you're saying well I'm too old to do it. No you ain't too old. You're breathing then you got chance to do what God called for you to do. Because if you go back to your word again Moses was called to lead the children out of Egypt. Joshua was set in place to take them in. See Moses got them there. But he couldn't take them in there because he let them folk get on his nerve. See, you trying to help folk, make sure when you're trying to help them that you don't let them rub off on you and you turn around and act like they act and miss out yourself. So God said, since you going to not do what I asked you to do like I asked you to do and I said you were going to leave, you're going to get them there, but you can't take them in, but I will let you see the promised land but because they got on his nerves 
instead of he decided he's going to hit the rock instead of speak to the rock. Folk will get on your nerves. You trying to help them, but everybody you trying to help, you can't want it more than they want. And there are a lot of people that's trying to help somebody, and you want it more than they want. If they don't want it, they ain't going to get it, and you're going to mess up yourself and wear yourself out and be gone, and they still here doing what they want to do. See, God teaches us principle. God teaches us wisdom on how to apply this word. This word is not an ordinary textbook, but this word is transformation. And when we use this word, it will transform us into what God called us to be. But as we're going through that transformation process, it ain't going to feel good. But it's all part of the process to come out. Everybody likes gold, and probably everybody in here got a little gold on you. But that gold didn't look as good as it is now when it was first found. When it was first found, it was black as the shoes you got because it was cold. But it had to go through the heat at a certain degree to take away all that blackness and all that moss from around it to get to the real gold that was on the inside. But without the heat to it, it would have remained cold. But the heat turned it from cold to gold. The pressure in your life changes you from being what folks say into what God called you. That's why it's important to know what God says about you and you say what God says, not what the folks say. And when we take that principle and we apply into everything that we do, we're going to see a difference. Now, I like them messages that make you feel good and run around and jump too. But there are certain times that God needs his people to understand how to practice what he's teaching and what he's telling us so that we can live and deal with what we've got to face. Because in this life, you got some situations. And you always got the enemy working to create chaos. And to stop what God wants to do in you. See, the enemy knows what you are capable of. That's why he blocks it and messes it up so you don't pay attention. Because if you pay attention to what God is saying, you're going to put him back in his place, the defeated foe that he is. But he knows he's got an appointed time that he's going to face. And that's why he's trying to create and get as many souls as he can get by always messing in your business. Always in your business. But you got to recognize him for who he is and say, uh-uh, that ain't what God's word said. This is what the word said. I am coming through this. Because through you, I can do all things. And the song says that every step that I take, I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus. Every prayer that I pray, I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus. See, when we understand that, it don't matter what's in front of me. Because when Jesus is involved, the atmosphere changes. That's why you want Jesus to show up wherever you be. He lives on the inside. And you got to act like he's there and wake him up. But he's not going to override if you decide, no, I, ain't, I, I, I ain't quite ready for that. I ain't doing that. So he's going to let you stay right where you are. Oh, the spirit going to keep nudging you and keep checking you. But if you say I ain't going to do nothing with it, you're going to carry that gift right on to the grave. Don't mean that you are not saved because if you accepted this salvation by faith, you are in the family of God because he said you're sealed to the day of redemption. But what it means is you miss out on the kingdom principles, the kingdom that he wants you to enjoy here. 
You're not going to be able to rule with him. You're not going to get no crown. Everybody think everybody's going to heaven going to get jewels in their crown. Not so. There are too many lazy folk. They're going to look at everybody else getting the jewels in their crown, but they ain't going to get no jewels. They ain't done no work. Salvation ain't based on no work. Salvation is based on your faith in the work that was done by Christ. But that crown with them jewels is based on those that done the work and the will of the Father. What God has for you is in this word. But if you do not use this word and go through the pressure that's put there you won't be able to reach and obtain what you got see if your character is in order you can stand the lies that folk tell about you you can stand all the deceit and everything else because your character is giving you discipline that I'm standing on the word they can say what they want. I already know who I am. And because I know who I am in Christ, I know where I stand in Christ, they not my God. And if they think they're going to shut that door, they only can shut that door if God allows them to shut that door. But if he allows that door to be shut, I just got to be in position to step in the next one that he opens. Because God is not going to shut no door that he had to open another one for you when you belong to him. That's why Daniel said, they that know their God, great exploits they shall do. Because they're not doing it in them themselves. They are doing it through Christ. That is what the word says. Character under pressure. So don't run from the pressure. But know that your character is being made so that you will be more in the image of Christ. But without the pressure, your character will continue to have flaws because you won't discipline this flesh to line itself. The book of Jude told us they had to contend for the faith. He wrote that to the believers as I close. Praise God to let them know that their salvation that they received was intact, but there was some that was teaching against the salvation that they had already been taught. But he said, even though they teaching against it, because they want to turn it into their own game, it talked about some of them was using it to benefit from the profit side of it, money. It said that they were like the clouds without water. In other words, it meant they looked the part, they sound the part, but there was no substance there. How many folk you know look like they stepped out of the GQ magazine? But they ain't nothing behind that look and that appearance. There is no substance. That's what the word was speaking to of in Jude. And so what he was doing is he's saying, no, you're going to have to contend for the faith. But he says, even while contending for the faith, those that you are trying to snatch out of the fire because you know they're going down the wrong road, he says, even with that, you got to be careful that they don't pull you their direction. See, that's why you have to be led by the Spirit on who you go to and who you start ministering and doing all of that. Because if God ain't led you there, that Spirit that's running them, if you're not careful, it'll draw you right on in. It's just like that line spirit. As I say so many times, them folk with line spirits sound just like the truth. And they can tell the lie and never blink. That's how good that spirit is. That's why you must know what the word of God said. That's why I like it. I come back to the word. Because sometimes your feelings will trick you. I was somewhere one day this week, and I started to go. Oh, yeah, I went up, went to Smithfield Chicken and Barbecue. And I was getting out of my car in the parking lot, and I saw somebody sitting over there in the car, and it looked like somebody I thought it was, and I was going over there to speak. They had the baseball cap on, the same kind of car and everything. And I got over there, I said, 
and it was getting a little, you know, it was after five, you know, it started getting a little dark. I said, no, nah, I ain't going up. That might scare them. So I just turned around and picked up the phone and called. They won't even in there. They were at home, and I thought it was them in the parking lot. What I'm saying is you can't trust how you feel, what it looked like. Go back and see what it said. And when you get this, you're you on the right track because God's word will abide forever. He and his word, they are one. But my feelings, my mo they will fool me every time. And I've had so many folk look at me sometimes and say, you all right? When I'm thinking, I have a serious look on my face. I ain't upset, ain't nothing going on, but I'm thinking. And when they ask me, I say, oh, I'm just in that deep thought. And I had to catch myself. But see, if they hadn't said nothing, they'd have said something wrong with Pastor Mary. Somebody must have got on the nerve, upset him. No, they didn't. Because you know what? I don't waste my energy on folk. They're going to say what they want to say. They're going to think what they want to think. I give it to the Lord and keep right on marching keep right on marching because you're not going to please people and ain't even going to try and I just made up my mind and people ain't going to mess around and make me miss out on what I need to be getting because they ain't doing right I work on me God can work on them I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do and let this word do the speaking so character under pressure I am not backing down from pressure but I thank God that in the pressure it lets me know how much more work I got to do but he gets me out of the pressure. As the choir begins to come back, praise God, if you're here this morning, you're outside of the family of God, we want to give you the word of God because that's what your salvation is based on, faith in the word and his grace that he's extended to us all. You may come and we'll share with you the word. We're going to prepare. If there's not one, we're going to prepare to go into our prayer. If you have a prayer request for yourself or someone else, you may let it be made known at this time. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Making your request known, praise God, is acknowledging that you're looking unto the Lord to move on that request. God does not get confused and it's not a ritual. You're doing it in faith. And that's your point of contact as you speak it out for your brothers and sisters to agree with you in the word of God. And I always have to say that because I have to remind us that sometimes we go through things and we do things and you get caught. You just say it's a ritual. You know, you just do it as a habit. Nah, we need the Lord to move. And when we're doing it, we're doing it in faith and we need to let the devil know we ain't just going through the motion. No, we're giving this request to the Lord and then that reminds me to stay focused on what his word says and not the situation. But be in position as he began to enlighten me on the situation what my next move is. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, you've heard each and every request, and you see those that are standing, you see those that may be remain seated and the hand lifted. Whatever the case, their point of contact, God, you know how they have given you that request. And we as a body of Christ, we set ourselves in agreement with our brothers and our sisters on each and every request that has been given to you in whatever form or fashion it has been given. We set ourselves in agreement according to thy word that if any two can touch and agree as asking anything in thy name, that you would do it for them that your Father in heaven might be glorified. And that's because we are praying and asking according to your will. And your word is your will. And so we thank you for that now as we stand upon the word of God. That you might be glorified in the matter. And Father, if our request is outside of your will, 
then we yield that request to that that you desire and that that you know that is best because our trust is in you. We know what we want, but then you know exactly if we're ready for that that we're asking. And you know the appointed time. So God, we say you do what you will as you will with that request. But I've done my part by making the request known unto you. I appreciate you for who you are, and I thank you for all that you have done, the small things as well as the great things. And the families, Lord, that are dealing with the bereavement at this time, God, yes. we ask that you would yes. minister to their heart, yes. Father, right now and comfort yes. them like none other. Yes. But this is a part of life. And God, as you take them through, you be their strength. For where we are weak, you are strong. Amen. And so we thank you right now for ministering to all the bereaved families. God, we thank you for those that are going through recovery right now yes, from Lord, the health thank situation. You. Thank you, Lord, God, thank we thank you, you for all of the thank progress you, that has been done and that that's yet to be made. God, for we give all of those with any health issues or health concerns, we place them under your care and under your word right now that you would minister according to your word, encourage the hearts of the family members, God, that they will see you at work and give thy name the praise, the glory, and the honor. For God, you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord thy God that heals. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord thy God that provides. Hallelujah. Jehovah Nisi, your banner is over us. Thank you, God. God, we thank you for it thank right you, now. Lord. That you have us covered. Thank you, Lord. And we, your children, God, yield our yes. ways unto you. Thank you, God. And thank you for enlightening us according to thy word. Thank you, Lord. And then giving us the wisdom to apply that word that we have learned so that it will transform us into the likeness of you, even the Lord. We thank you, God, that you accepted us as part of your family. And now we thank you, Lord, for the growth that you are working within us to get us to the position and the level that you called us to be. All for your glory. We thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. We take nothing for granted. Thanking you for the small things as well as for the great things. God, we appreciate your people. We appreciate the request, and God, we appreciate the fact that your name will be given all the praise, the glory, and the honor for each and every request. For we realize that it will only get done through you. And as you complete the task, God will let the praises be given back, and all the credit goes to you. But in the process, while we're waiting on manifestation, of the various requests we will continue to thank you that you're working on each and every request in spite of what I might see or hear you're working behind the scenes for those that are called and those that love you and are called according to your purpose God you are ministering right now we thank you for that but we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to your purpose. Thank you. God, we appreciate you so very much. Thank you, God. And it is by faith that we walk and not by sight. Help us, God, to continue to go back to your word and stand upon that word. For your word will abide forever. And we thank you for you and your word. They are one. So, God, therefore, we can trust you because you've already given us your word. And we declare it to be so for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.